Yeah, hi, this is Raj Shets. In today's video, we are going to look into uh, standard cell library. And standard cell library, as I mentioned before, it contains timing and power data. It is very important to understand uh, how this timing data and how this power data is stored. So this video is going to be about timing data. And maybe I have to do one more on, on this timing data. Um, yeah, because this this library is read by the timing verification tool as well as by the implementation tools. And inside the implementation tool, there are also timing engines. Um, so this information is used for optimization as well as for verification. A standard cell library has a common part that is common for the whole all kind of cells. And that is the, I have put an example here before. Okay, your library typically start with, okay, name of the library. Then it has units, definitions. So if there is uh, any time data, timing data, it is here, for example, it's in nanosecond. Any voltage is in volts. Any current is in milliampere. Capacitance in one picofarad. And leakage is in nanowatt for this particular example. And for any other library, for different process node, this can be a different thing. So after units, you have another important information, and that is these tables uh, information. So timing data, and you will see in a minute with, with an example on a NAND cell, the timing data for all standard cells in the standard cell library is stored, both the delays as well as transition times in the form of lookup tables. So what you do is it's like an um, like an, an index. Uh, think of that as a two-dimensional array. So you have, as you can see here, okay, one variable is total output capacitance. So C zero, C different values of capacitance. And then on the other axis is here. Look at input transition. When the input trans is zero, trans, I just modeling with different example okay then you say that when input transition is t0 and output capacitance is this uh, this is the actual value similarly when t0 uh, t0 and c1 this is the value this is the value so you have like a um, kind of table there rows and columns now, in order for later on, it comes, it's not going to be told exactly what is what here and here. So that information is, a, is, is, for example, it's a template. It's a delay template that will come later on. And variable, one variable is output capacitance. And the other variable is input transition time. And then actually indexes, these are actually these values here. That will be... Um, that will be there for delay as well as for power. And we will look into an example below. Then another important thing is operating conditions. This particular library is um, the data, the characterization data, that delay data or timing data and power data that you see. What happens is each cell is taken in, in spice and they fix a particular voltage because when voltage changes, delay changes. So the entire information in the library is for that voltage. And temperature was fixed to be this one or whatever. The process is this one. Well, what is the process this means? So within a particular, say, whenever we get a chip, uh, different things within the transistor can vary. I mean, even though you all make for exactly that one spec, but length for example will not be for every one of them exactly the same it will slightly vary right uh, in manufacturing threshold voltage even though you try to be single value for every transistor but it's not gonna be um, similarly you with some other parameters your uh, there will be some variation in your um, tracks in your areas and whatever you know um, you create on the chip there will be variations so as a result of those variations you will have some dyes some silicon so even though it's the same wafer 
but within a wafer uh, different dyes different chips within a wafer might be <clears throat> slow one might uh, different parameters might make it a little bit faster than the other one right so those kind of changes can happen um, so and what can also another type of variation is maybe it's a separate video I should do is you can also have some variation within the dye too right so you can have inter dye as well as intra dye or the other words because on chip variation within a chip your transistors may not be exactly similar so what we do is we try to prepare for the worst case scenario okay what is the slowest silicon you can get then what is the fastest silicon you can get and then we pick one kind of a typical value and we try to close timing in typical and slow and fast yes the problem is not when if you assume it's slow what we will assume there then every stem cell will be slow but that's not going to be the case right uh, some will be slow some will be fast and all that and we have different methods of modeling that but we will get to that in in the static time analysis but here a, a particular stress library is only um, is only for that particular voltage right and after some of the common areas i think those are the important common things then we start like a cell definition for example this cell um, its name is N2X1, just like one I put in the example. So this is just, just a random, I asked ChatGPT to create a library and I checked the syntax and all that. So this is not a real library. Uh, but it created a pretty good library, um, which was good enough for you to, for me to show that to you. So the very first information is, this is a nice information for it now, even though when the tools run it, they can get that uh, information from the layout views too but typically even within a static time analysis or again there is a sign of static timing analysis which is in the case of synopsis is prime time but you can also do an st a static timing analysis and what is static time analysis what is the difference between static time analysis and the simulation the dynamic simulation will do i will explain that in a in a separate video I will do a few videos on static time analysis, but um, that we have to do on bigger chips, STA, static time analysis. Okay, dynamic simulation is not possible. So what we do is we have a sign of a, a tool with a very high accuracy, which we use for before we tape out. But within synthesis tool like design compiler or with an implementation to a fusion compiler, IC compilers, we there are also uh, sign of engines some a smaller version um, smaller means the version that are not sign of quality but they give you a decent value but their memory loading and all that the footprint in the memory is smaller so what happens is those tools the pure verification are also able to know the area of it and they can report that so area information is there and then a cell this end for example i mean here i put a buffer here so i should have Put an AND gate, but it's, it's the same thing. That AND cell can act as a driver. At the same time, it can act as a receiver. So when it acts as a receiver, now if you go back and look into CMOS so, um, lectures that I did, the input um, has a high capacitance. There is no direct path from input to source or drain, if you remember, right? Because there is a gate oxide in between. So when a, a cell, an AND or a buffer, it acts as receiver, you what you are interested in is its capacitance, input capacitance. And when it's driver, now that's the that's the beauty of it, you know, when even when you have a transistor model, when we look into um, um, analog so you you have an input side and output side the the output side well now it's acting as a driver so if you remember there you know there is if it's an NMOS on or is BMOS on they always have a resistance right they it, it, it's like an acting as, as a voltage source. So if you remember, again, go back to my CMOS. Here you can have at output 0 to high or 1 to 0. 
if if you assume like this is uh, an inverter sorry so it it drives a voltage here and so it's a driver it's a driver with some sort of what you model here is the voltage is swing that has you model as a voltage source and that of course is not ideal it has some resistance there will be some drop inside so all that is modeled as a driver so a cell can be a driver can be receiver and in standard cell library that we're using we will use this Thevenin equivalent of the driver and a receiver and a library where it's used the driver is modeled as a voltage source in series with the resistance and if you remember from your electronics classes this is a Thevenin equivalent of any circuit okay so then complex circuits and MOSFET we are just modeling it with two simple parameters a changing voltage which goes one zero one zero and as resistance and this is Thevenin so this type of library where drivers are with with a voltage source instead of the resistance are called NLDM library non-linear delay modeling library the um, the other way of doing it is called CCS composite current source modeling and that uses the Norton equivalent means it's a current source if you again remember from the from the electronics course it's a current source and the resistance that you have in series actually appears in parallel but for this tutorial i'm not going to complicate maybe at the end after time i can do one video which where i compare between nldm and cch just for you to remember it okay because most of the library these days are ccs on a smaller technology nodes but you will still see plenty of these so and let's have first concepts on this one which is actually this more of this is is used um so let's have concepts on nldm and then at the end we will see a difference between nldm and ccs okay i think that's enough for this video uh, i will get into this this table for delay next time all right take care